episode 16 title of the course is advanced material science unit 4 in this episode we will discuss about junction formation contact formation junction lasers at low temperature near absolute zero only few of impurities atoms are ionized and hence the conductivity is low as temperature is increased more and more of the impurity atom ionize and so conductivity increases the slow increase in log sigma is due to the presence of large impurity scattering and small amount of carriers when all the impurities are ionized the mobility decreases slightly because of the predominance of lattice scattering so log sigma shows as slight downward trend at high temperature the carrier density increases enormously by the thermal generations and so the conductivity increases rather steeply though the carrier mobility decreases with rise of the temperature due to the lattice scattering this effect is overcome by the large number of carriers produced by thermal agitation at high temperature the material becomes practically intensive just we move on to junction theory or junction formation a pn junction is a junction of p type and n type semiconductor a junction cannot be formed by just bringing the two types of material in contact because a surface is a discontinuity in the regular structure of a crystal and prevents the flow of charged carriers from the material to another during the growth of crystal different concentration of dopant are added at regular interval of time this will produce n type and p type region in a crystal the boundary between two region of opposite characteristics is called as pn junction and has specially property as rectifying action a three region that means p n p r n p n crystal exhibits transistor action where the superposition of the property of the two junction cannot can also act as an amplifier rectifying action as pn junction in a diode when a pure crystal is doped to become p type semiconductor the fermi level shifts down from the middle of the energy gap towards the acceptor level when the same crystal is doped to become n type at one side and p type on other side the fermi level has to be constant throughout the crystal at thermal equilibrium this means that the electron energy level at the bottom of the conduction band in the n part at lower than those in the p part by an amount equal to the contract potential or barrier potential electron volt at equilibrium there is no net current flow across the pn junction the concentration of electron in the conduction band on the p side is small but they can accelerate down the potential hill across the junction to the n side resulting in the current i naught that is proportional to their number the concentration of the electron in the conduction band on the n side is very large due to donor contribution however only a small number of these can flow to the p side by climbing the potential barrier at the junction at equilibrium the forward and reverse current are the same equal to i naught there is an equal contribution to i naught from the flow of holes across the junction if an external voltage v base i is now applied to the crystal such that p side becomes positive with respect to the n side the electron energy level will change note that the potential for electron is opposite in the sense to the conventional method 
of representing the sign of the electrical potential. The barrier at the junction is now lowered by electron volt input resulting in greatly enhanced current flow in the forward direction from the N side to the P side. This change in barrier does not affect the electron flow in the reverse direction so that the applied voltage causes a large net current in the forward direction. I forward equal to I naught into exponential of E V I divided by K T minus 1 is approximately equal to I naught exponential E V I divided by K T. The exponential in equation A arises as the probability of jump across a barrier is related to the height of the barrier in the usual exponential way. If the external voltage V i is now applied in the reverse direction, the potential barrier at the junction is increased. This would drastically reduce the current flow from the N to P type side while the reverse current would remain unaffected as before. I reverse is equal to I naught into 1 minus exponential of minus E V I divided by K T that is also approximately equal to I naught. Thus the P N junction acts as a rectifier that means it would contact current in one direction in opposite direction there is no flow of current. So if we give an alternating voltage as the input signal we can get the rectifier of insoloid current pulses as the output. Rectifier equation the current density across the PN junction has four components. First we will discuss the current I1 due to the flow of minority electron in the conduction band of P type to the conduction band of N type. The current I1 flows from left to right. This current is not affected by application of forward or reverse bias because whatever be the bias voltage, the potential barrier is always down to N side and therefore any electron reaching the junction boundary from P side will easily swipe to N side. Second one is the current I2 due to the flow of minority holes in the valence band of N type to the valence band of P type. The direction of I2 is from right to left. That means you must remember that if the whole current and electron current direction are in opposite direction then the conventional current both these currents can be added. Uh, therefore the electron current is in the opposite direction to conventional current and the whole current is in the same direction as the conventional current. This current I2 is also independent of any applied voltage. The current I3 due to flow of majority holes in the valence band of P type to the valence band of N type. The direction of this current is from left to right. The current I4 due to the flow of majority electron in the conduction band of N type to the conduction band of P type. The direction of this current is from right to left. Therefore, net current capital I is equal to I base 3 plus I base 4 minus I base 1 plus I base 2 which flows from left to right. The next one is junction laser. Light emitting diode and solid state semiconductor laser work on the same principle of carrier recombination producing electromagnetic radiation in direct band gap semiconductor. In a LED the emission process is spontaneous while in a laser it is stimulated. Laser is an <coughs> acronym for light emission by stimulated emission of radiation. There are a large number of laser material and systems. There are gas based laser example helium neon laser and solid state non semiconducting laser like ruby laser. A comprehensive list of commercial laser 
lines and their emission wavelength is very important laser are highly monochromatic the line width is very small they are also specially and temporarily coherent the main reason for laser action is population inversion that means the mass be more number of occupied excited state than ground state incident optical radiation causes transition from the excited state to the ground state leading to stimulated emission the phonon emitted is in phase with incident radiation spontaneous and stimulated emission are important thing in production of laser then we move on to semiconductor laser while there are number of different laser system semiconductor laser have some unique characteristics in semiconductor transitions are between energy band while in conventional laser these are usually individual atomic state that means either in the gas phase or defect state in the solid phase electrons in a band have an energy spread due to the thermal fluctuation this can affect the laser line width this is similar to the thermal line broadening observed in leds the active region in the laser is narrow typically less than 1 micrometer this can cause a large beam divergence the spectral characteristics are influenced by the laser material like band gap and refractive index the lasing action is controlled by the incident current so modulation by the current is possible this is also possible because of the short photon lifetime in the semiconducting material stimulation emission spontaneous and stimulated emission are essential process for efficient lasing action spontaneous emission must be suppressed also when the photon is incident on the semiconductor absorption is possible instead of stimulated emission let pi be the incident photon flux the rate of the three process absorption is denoted as rab spontaneous rsp and stimulated rst can be written as rab is equal to b12 n1 pi rsp is equal to a21 n2 rst is equal to b21 n2 pi where n1 and n2 are the population in the ground state and excited state the terms b12 a21 and b2 are called einstein's coefficient and represent the probability of three process they are material and transition dependent the rate of absorption and stimulation emission are dependent on the incident photon flux while the spontaneous emission is not for the system in equilibrium the radiation of the population in the excited and ground state can be approximated by simple boltzmann distribution that gives n2 divided by n1 is exponential of minus del e divided by kbt this is true when del e is very very greater than kbt since the net optical transition has to be zero then rab is equal to rst plus rsp then the equation becomes b12 n1 pi equal to a21 n2 plus b21 n2 pi the einstein coefficient depends on the material and energy level but not on the type of transition this means that b12 is equal to b21 also for an efficient lasting action the rate of spontaneous emission must be very small so ignoring rsp equation difference in stimulation emission and absorption can be written as rst minus rab is equal to n2 minus n1 into b21 pi 
optical gain in laser is positive only when n2 is greater than n2 that means when population inversion is achieved usually some external means are used for inversion in a semiconductor laser there are energy bands not individual energy states so population inversion must lead to an increase in carrier concentration in the excited state that means usually the conduction band for a pn junction external injection of a carrier by applying a forward bias can create population inversion this is similar to a led that in the laser spontaneous emission due to carrier recombination has to be suppressed population inversion in a semi conducting material is most important thing along with the population inversion thermal fluctuation all also cause a spread in the electron density of state the occupation probability of a electron and holes in the conduction and valence band is given by fermi dirac distribution f of capital e is equal to 1 by 1 plus exponential of capital e in minus e f n divided by k b t where e f n and e f p refers to the highest occupied state in the conduction band and valence band during the population inversion if n c and n v refers to the effective density of the state at the conduction and valence band edges then f c n c refers to the density of the occupied state and 1 minus f c into n c refers to the density of the unoccupied state in the conduction band a similar expression can be written for the valence band then the rate of for three transitions absorption spontaneous emission and simulated emission can be written as r s t is equal to b to 1 integration of 1 minus f v into f c n c n v n p h small d capital e where n p h is the number of photon per unit volume with energy equal to the band gap e g for lasting action the spontaneous emission part can be ignored so that the difference between the rate of st- uh, stimulated emission and absorption is r s t minus r a b is equal to b to 1 integration of n p h f c minus f v into n c n v d e for lasting action f c is greater than to f v which means using equation e f n is greater than e f p which is the condition for population inversion in a semiconductor when e f n is equal to e f p then n p is equal to n i square so population inversion also causes the law of mass action to break down that means np greater than ni square once population inverse is created for stimulated emission to occur the incident photon energy must match the emitted photon this imposes the condition that the photon energy must be between the band gap and the fermi level position in the band that means band gap eg is less than hv that means the incident photon is also the less than efn minus efp there are number of semiconductors that can be used for laser device the wavelength range depends on the band gap of the active material typically laser material are similar to the ones used for led that means direct band gap semiconductor gallium arsenide based laser are used in the near ir region while for larger wavelength that means in the mid ir region pbx x is a chalcogenide like s sc and tellurate laser are used for laser in the visible region typically cdx x is a chalcogenide based laser are used laser device are single double heterostructure though homogeneous laser are also possible typically doping level in laser are much higher than leds one of the material in the junction is degenerated semiconductor that means the doping levels are so high that the dopant form 
and energy band that merges with the valence or conduction band this is also seen in the band structure the active region is usually lightly doped compared to the other region of the junction and hence the region lies usually in the active region when a forward bias is applied charge carriers are injected in the active region this achieves population inversion and recombination leads to emission the emitted light is reflected by the mirror at the end of the device and the inactive region with their lower refractive index confined the light within the active region the light intensity is proportional to the forward bias current there is a minimum forward bias current called threshold current ith above which stimulated emission take place and here the intensity is directly proportional to the current at low current spontaneous emission dominates while saturation in gain in seen at the other extreme the threshold current depends on the laser structure the optical losses due to absorption refractive index of the various layer and the device dimension since the active layer is usually less than 1 micrometer thick solid state semiconducting device are highly compact compared to other type of lasers the difference between spontaneous emission stimulated emission the spontaneous emission was postulated by bo the stimulation emission was postulated by einstein additional photon are not required in spontaneous emission additional photon are required in stimulated emission one photon is emitted in the spontaneous emission two photon are emitted in stimulated emission the emitted radiation is polymonochromatic the emitted radiation is monochromatic the emitted radiation is incoherent the emitted radiation is coherent in stimulated emission the emitted radiation is less intense in spontaneous emission the emitted radiation is high intense in stimulated emission the emitted radiation have less directionality example light from sodium or mercury lamp for spontaneous emission in the stimulated emission the emitted radiation have high directionality example light from laser source some of the most important applications of laser due to high intensity high monochromaticity and high directionality of laser these are widely used in various field communication computers chemistry photography industry medicine military and scientific research in case of optical communication semiconductor laser diode are used as optical source and its bandwidth is 10 to the power 14 hertz is very high compared to the radio and microwave communication more channels can be sent simultaneously signal cannot be taped as the bandwidth is large more data can be sent the laser is highly directional and less divergence hence it has great potential use spacecraft and submarines computers in lan local area network data can be transferred from memory storage of one computer to other computer using laser for short time lasers are used in cd roms during recordings and reading the data in chemical field lasers are used in molecular structure identification lasers are also used in accelerate some chemical reactions using lasers new chemical compounds can be created by breaking bonds between atoms or molecules in photography industry lasers can be used to get three dimensional lens less photography lasers are also used in the construction of holograms in photography industries in industrial application of lasers lasers can used to blast holes in diamond and hard steel lasers are used as a source of intense heat carbon dioxide laser is used for cutting drilling of metals and non metallic such as ceramics plastics glass etc high power lasers are used to 
weld or melt any materials lasers are also used to cut teeth in saws and test the quality of fabric in medical field pulsed neodymium laser is employed in the treatment of liver cancer organ and carbon dioxide laser are used in the treatment men for liver and lungs lasers used in the treatment of different types of cancers laser used in endoscopic to scan inner parts of the stomach lasers used in the elimination of moles and tumors which are developing in the skin tissues in military field laser can be used as war weapon high energy lasers are used to destroy the enemy aircraft and missiles lasers can be used in the detection of ranging lights radars in scientific research in the scientific research field lasers are used in the field of 3d photography lasers used in recording and reconstructing of hologram lasers are employed to create plasma lasers used to produce the time chemical reaction lasers are used in raman spectroscopy to identify the structure of molecules lasers are used in the michelson morley experiment a laser beam is used to confirm doppler shift in frequency for moving objects in 1917 einstein stimulated absorption and emission of light is discovered this is a most important thing of laser in 1954 charles towners and shoals masses prediction of optical laser they won the nobel prize in 1964 for its invention in 1960 maiman the first demonstrate of a laser ruby laser that is a most important thing first gas laser first nd laser was discovered in the year 1961 the first semiconductor laser was discovered in the year 1962 the first carbon dioxide laser that means ir laser was discovered in the year 1963 a laser is a device that generates light by a process called stimulated emission laser light is highly intense than the conventional light coherence is the property of the wave being in phase with itself and also with another wave over a period of time and space or distance there are two types of coherence temporal coherence spatial coherence for laser radiation all the emitted photon are in phase the resultant radiation obeys spatial and temporal coherence helium neon laser emits continuous laser radiation due to the setting of n windows angle the output laser is ne- nearly linearly polarized gas laser are more monochromatic and directional when compared to with solid state laser application of india laser these lasers are widely used for cutting drilling welding in the industrial product it is used in long communication system it is also used in endoscopic application the number of atoms present in the excited state n2 is greater than the number of atoms in the ground state n1 is called population inversion this population inversion is a important thing in pro- production of laser the process of rising the particles from ground state to excited state to achieve population inversion is called pumping that means the process achieving the population inversion is called pumping action dear student now we are in the end of unit 4 in this unit we discussed circuits and process simulation and integration junction formation junction lasers and contact formation etc
dear student we will discuss the next unit in the next episode thank you